In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill the hearts of the faithful, and enkindle in them the fire of thy love. Send forth thy Spirit, and they shall be recreated, and thou shalt renew the face of the earth. Let us pray, O God, who did instruct the hearts of the faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit. Grant that by the same Spirit we may be truly wise and always rejoice in his consolation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Father Lord, we thank you for the gift of today, the 19th day of the month of October. And as we reflect on the topic, the key to defeat every spiritual battle. May your word enlighten us that all spiritual battles we face may be rendered powerless by the power of this word. And we may gain victory through this word we are about to share. This is our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, I will begin by sharing a story which we may have heard before about this young man who was very wealthy. He built a three-story building which he occupied alone. He had great love for his wealth. One day, the devil came knocking at the door of his house. When this man opened the door, the devil beat him mercilessly that he couldn't even stand the beating. He ran to a priest and the priest asked him to surrender the keys to the door of the house to Jesus, for Jesus alone would save him. However, on getting home, this man asked Jesus to occupy only the topmost floor, which, is, which was the third floor of the building. <coughs> However, the devil came a second time. This time around, the devil beat him so mercilessly that he even was almost dead, he escaped with his life. He ran to a priest again, and the priest repeated the same thing. Go and surrender the keys of your building to Jesus. He alone can save you. This man went back home and also did or repeated the same thing by giving Jesus the second floor and the third floor and remained or kept the down floor to himself. The devil came the third time and this time around the beating was so severe that he had to hearken to the instructions of the priests. He surrendered the keys to the building to Jesus and Jesus took over the building the devil came a fourth time thinking it was the same old story he never knew that it was no longer business as usual this time around on knocking at the door of the entrance of the house Jesus opened the door and the devil took to his heels and ran away and never came back my dear friends in christ i just wish to begin with this story to tell us of the importance of surrendering the keys to all spiritual battles to jesus for jesus alone can save us if we go to Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse number 15. The word of God says, Do not be afraid, for this battle is not yours, but mine. 
to every spiritual battle we engage in against forces it is good we surrender it to jesus because jesus alone can give us victory may we look into this topic more closely the key to defeat every spiritual battle the word key can be used in different contexts on the one hand it could be used as an aid to unlock or open a door or have access to a locked place on the other hand it could be used in terms or in the sense of something that is very important very vital invaluable and quintessential without which one can make no headway within the context of spiritual battle against forces of darkness as we can see in ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 may we go to this very passage of the bible ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 which reads for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this age against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places the word key can serve as both a means to unravel the hidden intentions or doors and also can serve as a conditio sine qua non to overcome forces of darkness the only key that can be used to unravel spiritual mysteries and also be used to overcome spiritual forces is prayer prayer is the key prayer is the master key sing this song with me prayer is the key prayer is the key prayer is the master key jesus started with prayers and ended with prayers prayer is the master key dear friends in christ i welcome you once again as we look closely into the scriptures to see some of the spiritual battles fought this reflection will be divided into three phases in the scriptures we find series of spiritual wars and battles that have been there before creation during and after creation may we go to revelation chapter 12 verse 7 through 12 we shall see that even before creation a war broke out in heaven may we read this passage of the bible for a deeper understanding of this revelation chapter 12 verse 7 downwards and war broke out in heaven michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon and his angels fought but they did not prevail nor was there a place found for them in heaven any longer so the great dragon was cast out that serpent of old called the devil and satan who deceives the whole world he was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him this angel is in question is lucifer the word lucifer is derived from the latin word lucis meaning light lucifer was the highest ranked angel of god and the most beautiful 
No wonder God created light first before all other created things. Due to the sin of disobedience of Lucifer and pride, this angel wanted to overthrow God as can be seen in Isaiah chapter 14 verse 12 through 14. May we turn over to this scriptural passage and see what Isaiah has to say in this passage of the Bible. I love this Bible I am using to reflect with you because the captions are always very beautiful. The caption here says the fall of Lucifer. So from verse 12 reads, How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weakened the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation, on the farthest side of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. The major quests of Lucifer and the devil or Satan has been to be like the Most High. In fact, if you listen to me attentively, you hear when I read something about going to the farthest side of the north. In geography, there is what we call the four cardinal points, the east, the west, the north, and the south. The true north is always located on top. North is always at the top of the cardinal points. And by the devil saying, I shall ascend to the farthest sides of the north. It means he wants to go and rise above God and overthrow God himself so as to sit on the throne of God. But this was unsuccessful because as we can see, as stated before, in Revelation chapter 12, verse number 7, it says, Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back, but they did not prevail nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. This is to say that the devil, Lucifer, was defeated and thrown down. You will see it when it further said, So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old called the devil, and Satan who deceives the whole world. He was cast out to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Verse number 10 says, Then I heard a loud voice saying in the heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and his power and his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been thrown down and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and they did not love their lives to death may you overcome your spiritual battles by the blood of the lamb and by the words of this testimony in Jesus name amen the devil did not stop fighting. The second phase of our reflection was or is in Genesis. When God created everything, 
he saw that it was good. In Genesis chapter 1, verse number 26, God created man in his own image and likeness. It's important I state here that the meaning of God is I am that I am. But the meaning of the devil is I am what I am not. The devil is the deceiver of the whole world. He deceives men and men often fall prey to what I may call idols of humanity. With these idols of humanity, the devil tempts man and man, if care is not taken, is lured by these darts of the evil one called Satan. If you go to Genesis chapter 3, when God realized that man was now the crown of creation, man was created in the image and likeness of God, the devil did not stop fighting. The devil went further. That same serpent of old, as was referred to Lucifer in Revelation chapter 12, otherwise called the great dragon, the devil, Satan, who deceives the whole world, did not stop in the fight to overcome and be enthroned as king over God, his creator. Since man was the crown of creation and the image of God, the devil chose to lure man to sin by disobeying God. The devil has never given up in the quest of wanting his creator, God, to serve the created devil. That is, that is the underlying factor behind the original sin. That is, the sin of disobedience is to be like God. As we had in Isaiah, when the devil said, I want to be like the Most High. He's, he now came to make our first parents, Adam and Eve, to disobey God. That is why he said to Eve, when you eat of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you will not die. Rather, your eyes will open and you will be like God. This quest to be like God has been the major mission of the devil. The devil has always wanted to be like God and therefore, in different ways, lures man to sin against God. And he does this best by using what I may call the idols of humanity. The idols of humanity, what are they? We have three major weapons which the devil uses to lure man to sin through temptations. The first one, you can write it in a tabular form if you have your Bible, is the concupiscence of the flesh. And the concupiscence of the flesh, its antidote, or it can be defeated. You can defeat the concupiscence of the flesh and keep check your flesh by fasting. I wrote the concupiscence of the flesh beside it. I wrote fasting and beside that fasting I wrote food. You can write it down this way. The second one is the devil, which is Satan. The major characteristic of the devil is pride of life. So you can write beside it, the devil, pride of life, and flame, fame, sorry, fame. And the only means to overcome the devil is by prayer. You can write beside prayer, shelter. The third idol of humanity is the world. And I wrote beside that, fashion or the things that trend. So the antidote for the world 
on fashion is almsgiving. And beside almsgiving, I wrote clothing. Our first parents were lured into these sins of the flesh, pride, and avarice or greed. That is why in King James Version of the Bible, the caption given to the book of Genesis chapter 3 is the temptation and fall of man. When the devil tempted Adam and Eve, they fell and sinned against God. God who created man in his own image and likeness had to desist him from having access to the tree of immortality. This can be seen in Genesis chapter 3 verse 24. God had to send Jesus to redeem mankind from the sin which our first parents had brought into the world. The sin of disobedience, which is the sin of wanting to be like God. This leads us to the third phase of our reflection, which is the temptation of Jesus Christ. In fact, you can see these temptations of Jesus Christ. I want to use two gospel passages in Matthew chapter 4 and Luke chapter 4. The devil does not stop in trying to overthrow God. He still had to tempt Jesus. If the devil had overcome Jesus in his three temptations, which are the idols of humanity, of flesh, pride, and avarice, as can be seen in Matthew and Luke chapters 4, that would have been the end of the story. Hallelujah, for Jesus has given us victory. The devil never stops in his tactics and fight to overcome, as can be seen in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, which says, Be sober and vigilant, because your enemy, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking for whom he may devour. Verse 9 says, Resist him, steadfast or strong in faith. Now, going to the temptations of Jesus Christ. There are, we are three temptations of Jesus. The first was when the devil came to Jesus, asking him to turn loaves or stones into loaves of bread. But Jesus answered him, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. This particular reading of Matthew chapter 4, we read it on the first Sundays or second Sundays of the beginning of Lent. You know, the Lenten period has 40 days, and Jesus fasted and prayed in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights before the devil tempted him. Now, the devil did not just ask Jesus to turn stones into bread. There is an underlying thing the devil wanted Jesus to do. You know, during the Lenten season, we are asked to observe three things. And what are they? Fasting, prayer, and almsgiving, as I pointed out, which are antidotes to these spiritual tactics of the devil, of luring people to sin, the flesh, the devil, and the world. Now, when Satan asked Jesus to turn stones into loaves of bread, the devil was not simply asking Jesus to do a miracle of turning ordinary stones to loose. No. You know, before Jesus left the world, he instituted the sacraments 
of the Holy Eucharist. And if you listen to every priest during consecration, he says, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body. You know, this is, these are the very words of Jesus Christ. What could otherwise be called the ipsissima verba of Jesus. The very words of Jesus Christ. In our catechism, we learned that the Holy Eucharist or the Holy Communion is the true body and blood of Jesus Christ together with his soul and divinity under the appearance of bread and wine. That bread and wine transubstantiates during consecration to the body and blood of Jesus. Now, what the devil tried to do in this first temptation of Jesus was to lure Jesus into sin of corrupting his flesh because he used bread which would be used by Jesus in the Last Supper as something to be used to symbolize the sacrament of the Eucharist, to tempt Jesus. So if Jesus had fallen prey to the saints or to the temptation of the devil, there would have been the corruption of the flesh of Jesus, which is symbolized. It's symbolized by the use of bread. Jesus used bread to institute the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist. That is why, even though while we come to receive Holy Communion, Jesus does not say bread of Christ, but that bread has now been transubstantiated to the body of Christ. Bread turning into the body of Christ. That is exactly what the devil wanted to do to turn the bread, which is the body of Jesus, into stone. In fact, Isaiah has, or rather Ezekiel has this to say about removing the heart of stone and putting on a heart of flesh. I want us to reflect briefly on what we have in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 7, if you have your Bible, from verse 9 through 10 and the word of god says here or what man there is there among you who if his son asks for bread will give him a stone or if he asks for a fish will he give him a serpent I want us to look into these words. Stone symbolizes the devil. Bread symbolizes Jesus, the Eucharist. Flesh symbolizes, or fish symbolizes Jesus. In fact, I, I want you to take a close look at the chalice. Whenever the priests in the altar there are, there are two things the priest uses in the altar one is the chalice and the other one is the ciborium inside the ciborium when the body of christ is inside the ciborium the sim the ciborium looks like a fish the ciborium is like a fish in that you see its tail and you see its cover that resembles the head of a fish so the fish in this context symbolizes also the body of Jesus while the serpent symbolizes the devil which who among you will his son ask for bread and he will give him stone or ask for fish and he will give him a serpent so the devil did not just want Jesus to turn stone into loaves of bread rather the devil, if Jesus had done what the devil asked him to do, it would have led to the corruption of the very flesh and body 
or that bread which Jesus would use in, institute, in instituting the sacrament of the Eucharist would have been corrupted and the flesh of Jesus invariably would be corrupted. Now, let us briefly go to the second temptation of Jesus Christ and I wish to read it out briefly. And it says, Then the devil took him up into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He shall send his angels to keep charge over you. This particular passage of the Bible, the devil simply wanted to, to, to lure Jesus to become a worldly messiah. In fact, that his fame be acclaimed by men. Jesus did not fall prey into this temptation because the messiah that was meant to come and save the whole world had to undergo the sufferings of the cross. In fact, there was only one antidote with which Jesus overcame this particular pride of life, which the devil wanted Jesus to show in the second temptation. Throw yourself down from this pinnacle of the temple. He will send his angels to keep charge over you. The devil was quoting um, Psalm 91, but Jesus, the major reason why Jesus came to the world, was not to show off. No. In fact, you see in Philippians chapter 2 from verse 6 downwards. There, there are key words I want you to take note of when I read them out. And it says, Though he was in the form of God, did not consider himself equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a servant and coming in the likeness of men, and being found in the appearance as man, he humbled himself and became obedient. Take note of that word, obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Now, there are two words I want to... He humbled himself and became obedient. When we talk about humility, you cannot talk about humility without talking about obedience. And you cannot talk about obedience without talking about humility. In fact, the sin, the original sin is centered on disobedience. But Jesus had to overcome the devil by his humility which is an antidote to the pride of the devil and obedience which defeated the disobedience of our first parents so with this passage of the bible it says he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even death on the cross the next thing you see is therefore for this particular reason god has highly exalted him and giving him the name which is above every other name that at the mention of this name jesus both in heaven on earth and under the earth every knee must bow and every tongue confess that jesus is lord to the glory of the father amen what was the reply of jesus when the devil came tempting him with this particular sin of the pride of life. He wanted Jesus to lose focus of his mission. Jesus said to him, It is written again, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Permit me, dear friends, to digress just a little. During the Lenten season, as I told you before, there are three things we are asked to observe. Prayer. Fasting, almsgiving. Fasting is an antidote 
for the sin of the concupiscence of the flesh. Prayer is an antidote to the sin of the pride of life. Take note of these things. In fact, um, Venerable Archbishop Fulton J. Shin talks about the three falls of Jesus Christ. He says that the first fall of Jesus and the rising of Jesus from that first fall was to conquer the sin of the flesh. The second fall of Jesus and the rising from that fall was to conquer the devil and the sin of faith or you know the trending things then the third fall of jesus and his rising which we will go into which is the final phase of our reflection was to conquer the sin of the world which is fashion now over to the third temptation of jesus christ again the devil took him up on an on up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory and he said to him all these things i will give you if you will fall down and worship me in fact this second or this third temptation of jesus christ in matthew chapter 4 verse number 8 is the same temptation in Luke chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. But Luke chapter 4, verse 6 and 7 explains this better. Luke tells us that when the devil took Jesus to an exceedingly high mountain, he showed him all the glories of the world and their beauties. And the devil went further to say, All these belong to me, and I give them to whomever I choose. Are you getting the point now? Whomever I choose, I give them. So the devil, you know, is trying to say that he is in charge of all the glories of the world. Now, there, there is something I want us to look into here. You know, I may ask you a question. If you are saying, Our Father, the Lord's Prayer, there is something... I want you to understand in that prayer it is not the devil actually that owns this world the one the world belongs to god but the devil controls the affairs of the things of this world through these three idols of humanity because in our father we say our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come why do we ask for the kingdom of God to reign on earth. Thy will be done on earth. Does it mean some other person is in charge or has dominion of this earth? As we referred to in the beginning, we said that the angels of God cast Satan down to earth. So this is now kind of the, the territory where the devil has dominion and he tries to overpower man but the only way man can overcome or defeat these spiritual battles is by hooking or linking up with jesus let us shortly conclude what jesus replied the devil in that third temptation and he said to him all these things i'll give you if you fall down and worship me then jesus said to him away with you satan for it is written you shall worship the lord your god and him alone shall you serve dear friends in christ one common denominator found in the replies of jesus to the devil is that he repeated it he repeated it he kept saying it is written it is written it is written what do what does jesus mean by it is written it is only our attachment to the word of god that can make us overcome the devil 
the word of God is the only weapon with which we can defeat the devil. And this word of God is nothing but prayer. I ask God to bless his word in our hearts as we keep struggling to overcome and defeat spiritual powers and forces that are waging wars against us. And by the power and victory which Jesus Christ has wrought, may we enjoy and share from the booty of the saving mysteries of Jesus through our constant communion with God both in the Eucharist and his word. This is our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may God Almighty bless you and bless his word we have, we've had today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you.